And we are live. Hello, Unsung and Tears. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm so excited to be with you. I'm going to give you all a few, a minute or two to go ahead and join us because we have a very special guest at our virtual happy hour this evening. And we're about to celebrate with him, him being here. So I'll just give you all just a few seconds because uh, I know it takes a minute to go live. And for those that are joining us, remember we are on StreamYard. That's our platform this evening. Be sure to click on the link in the post to StreamYard and give them permission to post your name. If you have a comment, I won't be able to see your name if you do not give StreamYard permission. And I wanna let our guests know who is asking the question or making the comment. So be sure and click on the StreamYard link and tell them it's okay to show your name, give them permission and I'll be able to read your comment to our guest. So I see you all are joining us. Welcome everybody. Happy virtual happy hour. So tonight, as you know, I have a very special guest. I'm so excited. And we have in the house, well, let me give you a little stats first before I tell you who it is, which you kind of know. They've sold 80 million albums. Of course, I don't know how many of y'all do that. 80, that's right, I said 80 million albums worldwide. 25 top 10 R&B hits, nine pop hits, and 31 gold and platinum albums. Tonight, everybody, our special guest and celebrate with me is Mr. Robert Cool Bell from Cool in the Gang. Yay! Hey, Robert, how are you, Mr. Cool? Hey, Tanya, how you doing? Doing great. Thank you so much for joining us. We are excited to have you in this strange time we're going through right now, uh, quarantine, everybody's home. How are you doing today? Well, I'm going to say I'm locked down in O-Town. O-Town is Orlando, Florida. Oh. For, uh, uh, six weeks now. Oh, wow. Okay. Six weeks you've been on lockdown? <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of a cool place to be, though, if you got to be locked down, I think. Yeah, I had job. I was on the uh, 80s cruise, and uh, that was like a, I saw like a pop for the cruise, uh, a songs of the 80s, and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, there was a group that couldn't make it because they had, I uh, went to Italy, uh, in that chat, and uh, they asked them to come on, and we were only supposed to be there for two days, and then um, other artists on the Catholic, so we ended up staying on the ship for a week. Oh, and I was okay. actually I was on my way uh, to Atlanta. I had a big media uh, 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 interview uh, day set up, and then when it really hit, um, the ship came back in through um, through uh, Miami. Okay. So I came to my home here in Orlando, and I've been here uh, ever since. Yeah. Uh, six weeks. You got stuck, huh? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. Yeah. All right. I see people are joining us and saying hi. Hey, Gwen. Hey, Keith. Eric. Yes, that's right. Eric Sunshine Stay. So we do have people joining us. And feel free, guys, go ahead and start posting your questions or comments, and I will share them with Cool today. So, Cool, I want to start. I always start from the beginning. Some people don't know the history or how you actually got started. Can you uh, Tell us how you Cool in the Gang got started. Go back to the beginning, just a brief summary, and just kind of update everybody on where it all started and how it all started. Okay, we started back in 1964, and we called ourselves at the time the Jazzy Act. Jazzy and, uh, Act. From the Jazzy Act, we changed the name to the Soul Town Band because we were a part of the Soul Town Review. Okay. The Soul Town Review trying to be like the Motown Review. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had to learn all these Motown tracks because they were singing uh, songs from uh, Motown artists. And uh, we became the uh, Soul Town band. Okay. And then when we left them, we uh, were working in the club. One of the master of ceremonies came up with this idea, came up with this concept called Cool in the Flames. And, uh, cool in the Flames. So we took on that name for Flames, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he had like cool and a big ice cube and flame, ice cube melting back. Anyway, we became a 
Um, <laughs> it's okay. Cool, cool. Play. And then uh, we met our first manager and producer. Uh, we realized that you had James Brown and the Famous Flames. Right. So, we didn't, well, we didn't want to have any problems with the Godfather, so we're, we're, we're going to call ourselves. So, yeah, let's change Flame today. Because the music, the music was a mixture of jazz and funk and R&B. Right. And and Motown flavor. And uh, that's when we became cool in the game in 1968. And we came out with the first record in 1969 called Cool in the Gang. The album's called Cool in the Gang. And we introduced ourselves to the music industry over 50 some years ago in 1969. Wow. And we're going to talk about that a little bit too. You said 50 some years. That's a long time. I'm going to save that for a little later. So, so that's how you got started. And where, what city were you in when you started? What, 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 Jersey City. Jersey okay. City. But you're actually from where? I was born in Youngstown, Ohio, but I grew up in Jersey City. Right. I just needed you to say that because you know I'm from Youngstown, so I just needed to, you to say that you were. Oh, <laughs> I know you're from Youngstown. I absolutely. Not many people from Youngstown. <laughs> What'd you say, Cool? It's what? Not many people from Youngstown. I didn't know you from Youngstown. <laughs> yes, I am. And uh, I see my friend Keith Cobbin is on here, who's also from Youngstown. So yes, I just needed you to say that for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, but you grew up in okay. Jersey. Yes. Okay. So great. So we got Youngstown in the house in Jersey. And then from there, and I know you. there's a lot of, um, but let me ask this, who were your influences, your musical influences? So from, uh, cause you mentioned jazz, R&B, pop, you mentioned a lot. So who influenced you all as Cool in the Game? Well, we started, started off as a jazz jack. So there were people like uh, mm. the late John Coltrane, Freddie mm. Hubbard, uh, Miles Davis, uh, Ron Carlett, and also Jameson, who did the, played all those tracks for the uh, for Motown in the earlier days. So that was some of our early influences. Okay. And so how would you define Cooling the Gang sound? There, there's a... There's a lot of mixture of things. You do it a lot. How would you define it if you had to define the actual sound of Cool in the Gang? Well, some people say our sound is contemporary uh, because of the uh, different styles from the jazz side to the uh, R&B to the funk and um, to the pop side and what we have done over 50 years. So it's more of a contemporary side because it's a, it's a mixture of many different sounds. Okay. Good. Okay, so is there any artists, current artists, or, or maybe not even so current, but other artists that you would like to work with or would have liked to work with that you that you never did? Or is there a list? Is there anyone in particular? Well, we were going to do something with Stevie Wonder at one time. Mm. He's definitely, uh, you know, a good friend of ours. And uh, we have toured with the Jacksons. Uh, Several times, even now with the Jacksons, uh, we toured with the Jackson when uh, Michael was there. Mm, um, that's wonderful. So, turn to young artists, I would say Bruno Mars. Bruno. That, they remind me of a young two in the act, same Owen style, yes. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. Oh, that and, would be uh, awesome. Yeah, that, that, that's well, an autograph, you know, we would uh, like to work with, and then uh, I'm sitting here, uh, and I've heard uh, do my partners in England uh, a weekend. Weekend wanted to do something with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you know, and then we you like the weekend. Uh, I mean, yeah. And then um, I got a call from Dougie Fresh, and he has a song called "Wash Your Hands." But you know, we still the Corona virus <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. I call it the Corona uh, blue. <laughs> so what we're talking okay. about doing um, something. Uh, cool Modine called and he wants to do something. And uh, okay, Eddie Levert, he wants to do something. So it's a combination of people, yeah. So what are the chances of any of this happening? Will we will we actually be able to hear any of this, you think? Will it happen? Well, well, we might be able to do something uh, with Dougie Fresh. As a matter of fact, Dougie Fresh was out 
on a tour with us called Keep the Fuck Alive. It was uh, Who in the Gang, uh, Dougie Fresh, Boosie Collins. And uh, we worked with the OJs a lot, you know. And uh, a brother Mark, I mean, he, he, he gave us our respect. Uh, he said that uh, he was influenced by our music, so. We'll see. We'll see. And now that we're on lockdown. Yes. Uh, Indeed we are. A lot of people are working together now. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I look forward. Please keep us, uh, the fans of Unsung Page, posted on that because we want to support you. And if that happens, we definitely have you back to talk about it and want to hear the music. And uh, we'll definitely put it out there to support you in those endeavors. We'd absolutely love to hear those. Okay. Now, Unsung Tears, please go ahead and send me your questions and post them for me, um, and I'll let Cool answer them. There's a few people on here, so go ahead and uh, ask us your questions. In the meantime, I've got a few, of course, myself. Who can you tell me, describe the moment when you knew you made it, when you, whether it was the first time you heard your music on the radio or was something else that happened, but when you finally said, ah, we made it. Well, the first time we heard ourselves on the radio mm -hmm. was back in uh, 1969, after we had changed the name to Cooling Game from Cool in the Flames. And we came up with our first single album, and we introduced ourselves to the industry as Cool in the Game. So we heard the song Cool in the Game. And it was an instrumental song, and people thought it was a Spanish band. And, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Because they had, it was horn driven. Yes. Uh, horn driven, conga, you know, that whole type of thing, talking on the record. And uh, that was the first time. And what was the name and of that song, Cool? Cool in the Gang. That's what I thought you said. Okay. The name of the song was Cool in the Gang. Okay. Yeah. The name of the song, the name of the album. Okay. And, of course, Cool in the Gang. We introduced ourselves to the industry as Cool mm -hmm. in the Gang. Very good. And, uh, Next big time period was uh, when we uh, recorded Funky Stuff, Jungle Boogie, and Hollywood Swing. Oh, yes. Those were big records for us. Oh, that yes. Was in the mix yeah. You know, we're still jamming off of those, cool. We're still jamming off of Hollywood Swing. That's my, one of my husband's favorite songs. And all okay. of it. So we, we appreciate it. <laughs> so. Okay, we've got a couple questions now. Eric Haley says, from what from what he remembers, the band started out as a jazz band, which we talked about. What caused the band to go into the direction of funk? Well, when we uh, backed up, when we became the um, Soul Town band, right. and uh, we were the backup band for a lot of the local talent in Jersey City, and they were trying to be like Motown. Right. And then, of course, we listened to James Brown and uh, uh, Sly and his family songs and a lot of groups coming up out of the 60s mm -hmm. into the 70s. And that's when uh, our music uh, became a combination of uh, the jazz, the, uh, the Motown sound, James Brown, mm -hmm. uh, also influenced by Sly and his family songs. Then we came out with our first record. Okay. That's how we that's how we started and moved on into the sound of the seventies. Of course, the sound of the eighties was totally different. It's more popular. I guess we'll get to that later. But yeah, well, we absolutely that. will get to that. Um, I'm, let me get a couple more questions, and then we'll go into that. Uh, Keith is asking, which Cool in the Gang song did you have the most fun recording? Funky stuff, Hollywood swinging, and Jungle Boogie. And why were they the most fun? No, really? Go ahead. Because we, uh, we, were, we were with Delight Records, and uh, the record company came to us and said, listen, you guys uh, have you know, a lot of uh, territorial hits on out You know, Connecticut, uh, uh, Virginia, Washington, New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was this producer had produced a big record called uh, from uh, Margo... Uh, the Soul Makusa and uh, uh, Mongo Tobago. And they wanted us to work with that producer. And we had one meeting with him, and uh, we weren't feeling that. So 
but what we did, okay. we went to the studio in New York called Baggy Sound, and we went in there around 8 o'clock in the morning, and we jammed, and we jammed, and we jammed. By the time we were finished, we have created funky stuff, Hollywood swinging, and Jungle Boogie. No more problems from the record company after that. <laughs> I guess not. We, we, we had a great time cutting them tracks. <laughs> oh, and, and those were your, wasn't that your first number one? Yeah. Yeah, those were your first funky number, stuff was number one. Yes. Yeah, it was, no, yeah, it was number one on for about seven weeks. Uh, uh, Hollywood swinging. And Jungle Boogie was top five pop. Yeah, we had a great time with that. Yes, and a lot of people did. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of people did. Hey, Robin, I see Robin is another Youngstown person on there. Um, okay, here's another question for you, Cool. Um, what songs garnered... Oh, wait. What was the inspiration for the song Jungle Boogie? This is from Eric. Let's do that one first. Well, I uh, started with the group, the Jungle Boogie. And like I said, we were just having fun, just cutting tracks, and uh, they just started to come together. Okay. And a uh, guy who worked with us called Donald Boyce, he said, let me put some on that track. And that's when he, uh, uh, we call him the voice of the boogie. And all those different grunts and sounds on Jungle Boogie was uh, uh, Donald Boyce. Oh, okay. And like I said, yeah, we just, Really time, I uh, oh, I'm sure. I can only imagine. <laughs> um, uh, what songs garnered your first Grammy? And did you expect it or were you surprised that you won? Well, that was uh, uh, actually was uh, Open Sesame because it was on the Saturday Night Fever track. The Bee Gees. Oh. And the whole thing was done to vote in the big movie, uh, very nice people with uh, open sesame. Okay. I didn't realize that was on, on there. Okay. Well, we had many, um, we, got, we had seven American Music Awards, though. Oh, wow. Okay. And so, yeah. what was Ladies the. Ladies' Night. And, you know. and what was that? What was the first for it? Was it Ladies' Night the first one for the American Music Awards? Yes. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're it was, uh, late, late night, yeah. okay. So since we're moving into the eighties, let's talk about that transition because initially, from um, my understanding, you didn't really have a lead vocalist. How did you find JT? Tell us about that transition with and how JT came into the picture. And I guess we're talking more of the eighties now. Yeah, well, we were out on tour with the uh, with the Jackson, actually Jackson. Jackson Five at the time, because Michael was there. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, a gentleman by the name of Dick Griffey, who started mm -hmm. Soul Out Records. Yes. Uh, he came to us. He said, you guys, you guys are doing well on the tour. But he said, you know what? He said, I think you guys need a lead singer. And we said, well, we thought about it. We said, well, you know, um, Commodore had Lionel Richie and Mm -hmm. Her father has Philip Bailey and Maurice White. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, maybe this is the time for us to make a change. And uh, we were recording uh, in the House of Music in, uh, in uh, West Orange, New Jersey. And Dear Dollar was there. And the owners knew J.T. Keller. He said, well, we have somebody that we'd like to introduce you guys to. And, uh, of course, it was J.T. Keller. And J.T. came in and my brother had him to sing uh, to some jazz progressions and little R&B, little pop, and he said, you're the guy. And that's how we got Elise Singer. Okay. No one else even um, auditioned? That was it? You heard him and you knew that was the voice? Well, we, we didn't have to listen to nobody else because we were in Jersey and he had to somebody at the studio. And uh, we said, hey. Can do it. You have the sound. You able to sing a little jazz, a little bit uh, uh, R&B, and uh, that's how he became our lead singer. Okay, that's great. And he was with you how long? How long was JT with Coolin' the Gang? Uh, uh, Ten years, from um, uh, 1979 to 1989. Okay, very good. And we enjoy those songs. Uh, 
I, I posted um, on the Fans of Unsung page, I asked people to list their favorite, I won't even begin to, to try and remember all of them, their favorite two songs by Cool and the Gang. And everything you can imagine was in that list. I couldn't begin to even tell you well, it would take the rest of the interview for me to tell you how many songs were in there, but know that people still love you, still love Cool in the Gang and are still listening to your music. Um, so we thank you for that. Let me, let's see, we got another question. Which honor were you most excited about um, being inducted? Well, I didn't, I was gonna talk about that later, but being inducted into the New Jersey Hall of Fame or the star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame? <laughs> that, that was, that's a good one. I would say the star in Hollywood uh, because we wrote a song about it. We said, "What are we going to get our star? We wrote a song about Hollywood playing. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> they, they were just no, late. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I just said they were just late getting you your star. What were you going to say? And of course, uh, New Jersey Hall of Fame because. Uh, Oh no, I'm from Yorktown, Ohio, but they started in Jersey City. So to be inducted into the Jersey Hall of Fame was a great one as well. Okay. So it sounds like that wasn't a fair question, really. I'm sure you were very happy about both of them. Absolutely. Yes, and we're we're glad you you got them, especially that um that Hollywood one. Well deserved. Let's see. Uh, we. I'm trying to see now. Someone is asking, when will your book be out? Well, we're working on that. Oh, um, okay. We had a ghostwriter, and we've been talking to uh, uh, to several ghostwriters, and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, I should say 2021. Uh, no, no, I'm talking about next year. Yeah, okay, 21. Yeah. 21? Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I ask this question. It's always interesting the answers I get. What was your, if you could think of one or one of them, your most memorable performance? Is there anything that sticks out in your mind? Well, uh, when we did, uh, when we played in Kenya, it mm -hmm. was for uh, the uh, 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 the World Health organization that was in, in Kenya and it was for uh, AIDS awareness and uh, we, we uh, it was over half a million people that was there and uh, one of the concepts the hook was no glove no love and we were trying to get the kids uh, you know to kind of uh, protect themselves when it came to AIDS awareness and oh, uh, okay. that was such a great thing yeah. so can half a million people Okay. Yeah. Now, if you could give some advice, because there's a lot of musicians trying to make it, new ones. If you could give advice to any musician today that are trying to make it, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? Well, I would say uh, be serious about what you're doing, work hard, uh, and uh, learn more about the business, you know, about publishing, the writers, and uh, 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 being able to a good manager because that's very important and uh, and, and uh, stay on top of it because it's, it's, it's not uh, an easy business uh, our career have been one of hills and valleys up and down mm -hmm. and uh you know we you know we we had some good months and then things got slow and then we would kick back in again i mean by that from the 60s to the 70s uh, when jt joined the band and uh, we were um, dealing with the music change and they were burning records in Chicago, anti-disco and yes. this and that. And uh, we had to uh, 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 recreate ourselves. And mm. people would come to us and say, oh, are you guys still together? This is just in 78. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's when we, uh, you know, we had, like I said, you know, success with Saturday Night Fever, well, Sesame, and then uh, uh, JT coming to the band. And uh, we made it through the 80s. Yes, you did. And then, uh, yeah, and then JT, you know, uh, I don't want to get into that for other reasons, uh, managerial, whatever. Right. Uh, he left in, uh, uh, in, in 89. 
So here we go again. What do you all do now? You lost your lead finger. <laughs> That's right, but you had a replacement there. Yeah, we had a couple. So you know what we did? We started to build our international market. Mm -hmm. We started going to places like uh, Yugoslavia, Romania. We even was uh, in East Berlin. Uh, all through Africa. We just started uh, right. on our market around the world, Japan, Tokyo, Singapore, you know, Australia. And uh, that's what we did. Okay. So people said, what we just do now? That's, that's what we did. And it worked because I know even today you're traveling. And we'll talk about that in just a minute internationally, big time. I, I follow you all. I know you're everywhere. Um, but during that, when JT's exit, then you had my buddy joined you all, Skip, formerly of the Daz Band. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, I, yeah. I love Skip's voice. So, and, and so I know he was with you all for a while as well. So you had a new lead singer. And let me go ahead and ask. Uh, we got a couple more questions. What, what's your favorite Cool in the Gang period, the early to mid 70s or late 70s through the 80s? <laughs> it was both, both periods. Getting back to Skip, and I've been, uh, been doing interviews here uh, on Lockdown. Mm -hmm. And I skipped a song called God Will Find You. Mm -hmm. And that was such a great song, along with a lot of other songs that Skip did with us. But that was right there at the time that we're living right now, and people, yes. you know, on lockdown, I've been wondering, so many people are dying right now, you know. So that that would be one of them. But there was many others. We have a song called Love and Understanding. And, um, you know, and the lyrics, uh, you know, people all over the world, it's time for love and understanding come together. So we're sitting in our homes with our families. And it can be a little rough, you know. I mean, uh, you know, so it could be some domestic problems or whatever. But right. Because we, we are on lockdown. The whole world's on lockdown. Yes, we are. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, celebrate life. And um, God willing, we're going to come out of this. We're going to come yes. out of this. And, and that's what we're praying for. Yes, thank you. I always... I kind of end with those words of encouragement, but you kind of did it here. So it's okay. We'll, we'll do a little more at the end too, but yes, absolutely. We will come out of this. We appreciate you saying that too, um, because it is some challenging times, but um, we're enjoying you, you know, different artists are coming. You get to interact with the fans a little bit. So that's, that's nice. We have the opportunity to do that right now because normally you might be on the road. Cool. So um, we're glad you, you're home and healthy and yeah. safe. Let's see. We do over 100 shows a year. I mean, uh, I know. And, uh, and let's talk I can't about that. Mind boggling, but <laughs> it oh. what it is. I'm sure yours will pick back up when this is all ended and people regroup. But there was the question, which I'll go ahead into that. What's next for the 2020s? Cool in the gang. A lot of people um, I noticed on the on the forum on our page have said, "Where where's cool in the gang been? We haven't heard from them." I know you guys tour. Like you just said, over a hundred shows a year. That's a lot of shows. But a lot of people hadn't heard, they don't know that. So you want to talk about where you've been and what you've been doing um in the twenties and lately, I guess the last few years. Uh, yeah, well, leading up to uh, twenty twenty. We spent a lot of time around the world. You know, we did major tours uh in Europe, uh we toured in uh Japan, uh uh, we were scheduled to do the Singapore Jazz Festival, the big uh, festival in Australia, mm. uh, Indonesia. Wow. Uh, we did the Woodstock of uh, Austria. So we've been away because uh, we've been traveling around the world. Right. But uh, we uh, definitely had plans of coming back this year, of course, but now it's going to be pushed uh, to next year. Right. But, I mean, I mean, we. We did 48 shows with Van Halen. Wow. We did 10 shows with Kid Rock. We worked Kid with Rock. the Dave Matthews. We worked with uh, Farad Stewart, you name it. Farad Stewart put the Gladys Light in the pitch. <laughs> so we've been, we've been working. And I'm, I'm glad you... Yes, I'm, I'm glad you're mentioning those groups because people don't realize that what a crossover group you guys are. We love you, but the Pop, people that love pop love you too. You're on that side. 
that end of the scale as well, which is wonderful. Um, so, well, we may not hear about you, you're, you're touring with a Rod Stewart or a Kid Rock. Those aren't the shows that we may, some people may not hear about listening to an R&B station, but you're staying busy, um, based, depending on who you're touring with or who you're on the ticket with. There just may not be um, someone that, they, they don't play that on our radio stations, you know, it might not be on the R&B format, so we may not hear about it. So I would I would say to the Unsung Tears, if you want to see Cool in the Gang, you need to go to Cool in the Gang's website and find out where they're going to be because they may be in your backyard and you don't know it. Isn't that right, yeah, Cool? Well, last year, it's, uh, 20 shows with uh, Boosie Collins and uh, Rod it was called Keep the Funk Alive. I love it. I don't think they came yeah. to Atlanta. I would have been at that one. <laughs> yeah, we worked at, you know, of course, with Gladys Knight and uh, a lot of various uh, other groups. Uh, uh, Frankie Beverly. Yes. We with Frankie Beverly, you know. So we've been, uh, we've been doing our thing. I have to. But, like I said, we've been abroad a lot too. Right. I know you've traveled international a lot, but there's not too many groups that can can say what you just said, that you, you know, you're with Kid Rock and and some of the other group, Rod Stewart. And then on the same the next night or the next week, you might be with Frankie Beverly and Mays or you might be with Gladys Hi. Knight. Hi. Yeah, there, there's that's that says something about Cool in the Gang, um, the number of years, which is 50 or plus now, actually over 50, and then who you actually perform with or, or you know, are on tour with. Um, that is just tremendous right there. I think that is a huge deal. People don't realize um, your music just transcends all, which is what music is supposed to do. There's no color line with it. Um, you're not in a certain category because you get all the categories, which I think is phenomenal. So, um, we, we thank you for that. That's wonderful. Cool. I, I don't know too many artists that can say that, what you just said. Well, thank you. We thank God for those blessings because, like I said, it's a very uh, trying business, you know. And to be, uh, some groups can't stay together for 50 days. It's almost 50 years. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> they have their problems and they go solo. Yeah, yeah. And, and you all are still together. That's awesome. Now, how many of the original members are actually still in Cool in the Gang right now? We still have four, uh, which is myself, my brother, Ronald Kelly Spell, George Brown, and Dennis Thomas. We are the four original members. We started with seven. Three of my guys have passed mm -hmm. over uh, the last years. Mm -hmm. But um, then we got guys who've been like Skip Martin. Uh, Dan Odin Mays, uh, Curtis Williams, uh, a lot of other guys, even J.T. Taylor. So we have had a lot of guys, excuse me, in and out of uh, the band. Okay. And I see one of the Facebook users, I don't have the name, but they mentioned Summer Madness. Ooh, that's, that song is one of my favorites. Um, so uh, my, fir my first robot was to j <laughs> David Height. <laughs> He says, my first robot was to Jungle Boogie. <laughs> he, wanted, he wanted to tell you that. Him and his wife enjoyed the backstage hometown treatment at Mountaineer. He's, he's in Youngstown as well. What was your manager's name from Western Pennsylvania? Weren't you a golden bear? He's asking a couple questions. All right. Well, uh, see, a lot of people popping up tonight. I've been on some interviews today. A lot of people from Youngstown. Yes, my, my home people supporting this chat and they wanted to chat with you. So yes, um, they're from all over, but yes, I, I just had to call out the folks from Youngstown <laughs> for you. So you knew they were here. Yes. Um, I left Youngstown in 1960. Wow. City. Okay. And the rest is history. That's but, uh, right. I feel like my hometown. Youngstown is the town we get down as well as Jersey town. All right. <laughs> Very good. Young, yep. Youngstown connection. That's somebody. Um, let me see. I'm trying to make sure I get all the questions. I get in trouble if I don't read them all. I, I hear about it afterwards. Cool. So, um, hi, cool and promoter friend in Europe, George Books. I'm aware of your travel. Somebody said that. Um, hi there, a bridge of melodies. 
And they have a name for that one. And what was the inspiration for writing Celebration? Well, that was right after Lady Night. After that night, we won two American Music Awards. And uh, when we uh, uh, returned back to, to, to Jersey, my brother came up with this uh, idea because part of celebration, I mean, part of ladies' night speak about celebration. Mm-hmm. You know, ladies' night. And uh, we were celebrating. He said, I got this great track. And we listened to it, and it, had, it, it would just have the magic to it. It was kind of like uh, down home. It had that, you know, like, you know, back in the day, like in Youngstown or in Florida or Georgia. Sitting out on the porch, and you're rocking in the rocking chair. <laughs> yes. there, and, and it had that thing that Yahoo and, mm-hmm. and yes, you know, this record was gonna be dubbed the type of record that it became. Oh my goodness! So we were celebrating. Yeah, and it became such a big record. Oh my goodness! It still is. It will never die. Everybody loves and knows that song. Absolutely. Uh, that's just a, one of those classics. My partner in crime, Luther, is saying hello to you. He's uh, one of the founders of this page. San Francisco, Oakland Bay area is where he is from. I guess people got tired of me saying Youngstown, so you're going to put some other cities in here. <laughs> so you know what you did there. Uh, my friend Vernon. Yeah, my friend Vernon is here. He has a radio show. He's, he said he saw you with more stay in the time in the Poconos at Mount Airy Lodge Casino. Yeah, we work with uh, Mars Day a lot too. Yeah, uh, last year, yeah, we do a lot of shows. Yeah. Okay. And I, I just want to tell everyone, if you have not seen Cool in the Gang Live, you are missing a treat. Find out where they're going to be in the future and make it a point to go see them because you all give a phenomenal show. I had the pleasure just in the fall to see you all. and They were in Atlanta. And I didn't sit down, I have to say. I didn't sit down. I was up dancing and having me a good time the whole night. So you you all killed it, as Vernon just said. Um, absolutely. So I I you all heard it from me. Go see him if you have the opportunity. Um, and thank you, Cool, for that night. It was wonderful. Vernon says yeah, that's a little town they ride around them cars, right? Yep, that was it. The the amphitheater like, is like, like the villages in Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was it was in the middle of a, a, a golf course or something in the neighborhood in the amphitheater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The amphitheater was in the middle of it. Um Vernon yeah. Yeah. Vernon says, What happened to the voice of the genie in the spirit of the boogie? Don Boogie voice. Well, I mean he's still around and I had mentioned that uh, Don was the voice on Jungle Boogie mm-hmm. as well as uh Spirit of the Boogie. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a little bit of open sesame, yeah. No, no, he's still around. He used to work for us, and uh, we see Don from time to time. Okay. And Luther asks, what were your thoughts on Little Kim's spin on your classic Ladies' Night? Good question. That was great, because it was uh, Queen Latifah, Little Kim, or mm-hmm. some artists. That was on that track, Ladies' Night, yeah. Yes, that was a good song. Well, if you like Ladies Night, you probably like that one. Um, this is always a fun question I've, I've asked occasionally. Have you ever had any mishaps on stage? I know one person had told me, I think it was the uh, Barquets, where they had a mishap on stage and fell off. Do you have any mishaps ever happen on stage that you can share with us or that you remember? Well, one was a very hot night in Dallas, Texas. Must have been almost 100 degrees that night. Ooh. And we're playing too hot. And all of a sudden, because of the heat, there was an electrical problem, and the keyboard caught on fire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, it's going too hot. Wow. <laughs> so they came out, they thought it was like, oh, they have to stop. They said, no, that was a uh, mishap because the uh, keyboard caught on fire, doing too hot. Oh, that's, that's pretty more. good. Okay. We're in Milwaukee, and we're at the Milwaukee Music Fest, and we were playing some of the bands, and we looked up into the sky, coming in was a tornado doing summer madness. <laughs> we got the hell out of <laughs> <laughs> You 
actually, they didn't clear the stage or anything? Did you actually saw the tornado and they hadn't cleared you all out? Yeah, we got, yeah, we got off the stage, yeah. I mean, sometimes those tornadoes pop up. Yeah, that's true. Uh, wow. Well, that was the end of that show. Okay. <laughs> so, no, it was. And where was it again? Where were you? Milwaukee. Milwaukee Music Fest. Oh, Milwaukee. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm glad you all are safe. Um, that was your su summer madness tour for real, or that particular show. And keyboards on fire. That I wish somebody had uh, recorded that one so we could see that. That would have been a classic moment yeah. to see. Yeah. Okay, yeah. very good. Well, cool. Con congratulations. Yeah, that's right. Bernie said you can't make that kind of stuff up. <laughs> um, well, no, um, I can't. Congratulations on a couple things. Um, of course, we talked about your Hollywood star, Songwriters Hall of Fame, and then 50th anniversary. Well, was it, it was last year or was it 2019 for your 50th or 2020? No, that was last year. Okay. So the record came out uh, in 1969. Okay. Uh, July 3rd, 1969, yeah. That is... Uh, Phenomenal. 50 years being in this business and you're still performing and people, you know, this that's just wonderful. Congratulations on accomplishments. Um, we appreciate the music. Truly, we're still playing and listening. Truly good music. Um, do you have any, let me see if there's, I'm make sure I don't miss any questions because like I said, I always get in trouble and I don't want to get in trouble. And you have some other things. Is there any new music? I heard a new song in the fall when I saw you all here. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but I really liked it. But do you? Are you working on new music? Is there any new music? And if so, where can we get it from? You must be talking about the song "Sexy." I believe I am. Yeah, that's uh, what I, I knew he sang. Well, he's been with us for about five years. And then we have another one that he did with my son, uh, I King, called Prince I King, called Royalty. But uh, yeah, we're working on a lot of products, uh, I guess it's for uh, next year now at this point, yeah. Okay. And uh, we're working on a documentary. Ooh, and, uh, Yeah, and uh, our book uh, working title is uh, Hollywood Swinger, number one with a bullet. I won't go into that yet, but it's pretty deep. Do you remember the Billboard charts and the other record? Mm -hmm. was number one, it was number one with a bullet, right? Yes. And it's behind the scenes that goes on in the music business. We'll get into that a little later. Okay. Now, the documentary, when can we expect that? Um, is it television? Or we're talking about a television, correct? Documentary? Well, actually, it's, uh, it's going to be a cartoon for animated as well. Oh, animated. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, we're working on that now. That'll be next year. Everything's now being put next year now. Okay. So, and and is there a movie in the talks too? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're talking about that too. That would be an awesome story to see. Um, yeah. There is a, one question. You kind of already spoke on us a little bit, but um, Luther has said, can you clear up any rumors or speculation to JT Taylor's departure from the group? Well, JT had some issues with management at the time, and he wanted to, you know, uh, do some things on his own, you know. And then this group, uh, I mean, I do that. I mean, uh, with uh, Genesis, uh, uh, Genesis uh, uh, Phil Collins, he went out and did his own thing, and he stayed with the band. But JT came back uh, with us in 19. 95. And he stayed with us in 1999. And then he decided to go on his own again. And we just did, um, we were inducted to the song uh, Writers Hall of Fame. Right. And uh, he came up and he did celebration with us, you know. So. Oh, nice. Very good. Yeah. So, okay, great. Yeah, so. I, I stick there from time to time, you know, especially this time of uh, the Corona flu. Yeah, the coronavirus. The coronavirus. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else you want to share with us? I you touched on most of the things I was going to ask you about. The only thing, and then you can tell me if I've missed anything that you want to share. Um, 
you, we talked about the movie. Is there also, I have read a cosmetic line of fashion in, in your Cool Kids Foundation. Is that something that's happening as well? Yeah, my son, uh, Hakeem, we call him Prince Hakeem, set that up. And uh, we also, uh, uh, I started on the concept about uh, a year ago, uh, the Cool Champagne. And we're pushing our champagne uh, definitely uh, next month. And uh, it's called, you can go on the uh, our website. We're, we're selling online right now. It's called lecoolchampagne.com. Okay, I actually and, uh, so, I was going to ask you about that. Lecool. Lecool yeah, champagne. champagne.com. Very good. Okay, and so they can go to your website, which is www.coolinthegang.com, correct? Okay, so I'm going to make sure I post these things afterwards so people have access and know. So it's a different website for the champagne. That's what I was wondering. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. Very good. And so they can order it now. That's correct? If they go to your... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. They can get off the phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard that. Cool from Cool and the Gang has a champagne. You can go order when we hang up for this interview. So we will absolutely try to support you on that. I actually would like to taste it. So we're going to have to get some, but it's only, um, it's only through ship shipping right now. Correct. Cool. No, no, no. We're, uh, we're in four states. Okay. What states uh, are you? We're in, we're in the state of New Jersey, state of New York, Florida, California. And we're working on Georgia, trying to get Georgia and Ohio. Uh, each state, you have to get licensed and compliance. Right. State. It's different from the rest of them, but yeah. But those are the four states we are, we are in right now. Okay. So, Unsung Tears, if you're in New Jersey, New York, Florida, and California, you can actually go to one of the locations there and get it. They can. Is that on your website where they can find out? Yeah, yeah you can go to one of the... Uh, Okay. Uh, but right now, uh, because of the, uh, the virus, a lot of uh, stores and restaurants are shut down. So, but you're still going to order online. Okay. Okay. So you all yeah. heard that you can still order online. Other than the circumstances, um, it's not easy to get everything. But when things <laughs> open back up, it'll be available. But in the meantime, you can go online. Let's support Cool and do that. Um, David keeps asking if you went to East High. David, he left Youngstown, correct, in 69, so you didn't go to high school in Youngstown, correct? No, I didn't, but I know about East High. Okay. <laughs> he knows about it, David, I, okay? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I went to Lincoln and Youngstown, and also Lincoln High School in New Jersey, Georgia City. Right. I had to say that because I don't want them to say I didn't ask you, <laughs> so I wanted to make yeah. sure. Um, Luther, this is a good question. Luther asks, who who are you listening to? What what music do you listen to? What artists do you listen to when you're listening to music? I listen to a little bit of everything. I listen to classical, jazz, um, people like uh, Bruno Mars, uh, uh, The Weeknd, uh, you know, uh, Jay Z. Okay. I, you know, I keep my I keep my ears to the street. Okay. Do you watch? Uh, Someone's asking this. Do you watch Unsung? Do you actually watch the show Unsung? I've seen, I've seen quite a few, yeah. Okay. The guys on the Barcades, the Isley Brothers. Uh, didn't you do the OJ? No. These guys have done quite a few. Yeah, they have. Um, they have done quite a few. There's been a lot of seasons. So, um, so someone is asking what your manager's, oh, David, your manager's name from Western Pennsylvania. Did you have a manager from there? Does that sound familiar? Uh, Adele, Adele Bayan. Adele Bayan. He's also from Youngstown, Ohio. He's my cousin and my manager for Cooney. Okay, so that, David, there you go. That's what David apparently knows this person. So he was asking. So I think he was trying to think of the name. Very good. Yeah. Uh, your, uh, Keith is saying your base is displayed at the Smithsonian, Smithsonian Institution National Museum of African American History. <laughs> and call, that's a mouthful, Keith, in Washington, D.C. How did that come about? <laughs> well, uh, well, we got to call about that. 
and uh, what they were doing the grand opening. Uh, I guess because of my background and my history, they called us about uh, putting the base uh, in the Smithsonian uh, institution. I'm also in the one in Atlantic City. I'm also in the one the Grammy uh, 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 Museum in, uh, in uh, New Jersey. Uh, mm. Yeah, my, my base, my base I should say, quite a few places. But the one in Washington, that's definitely a great honor to be my basic part of the Oh, yes. Uh, institution, yeah. That's wonderful. I've, I've not had the opportunity. Maybe I'll get there one day. And so the other part of Luther's questions is we, we asked if you watched Unsung, would you want to do an Unsung show? Is that something you might be interested in? Would you want the producers to approach well, you? Uh, I, I, at some point, but we, we would like to finish our documentary and our movie first. Ah. But yeah. yeah, that's something. Yeah. The story's going to be similar. Oh, right. Okay, that's understandable. Thank you for answering yeah. that. I, I can't wait myself to see it. I, I love to watch the stories of the artists. They're always interesting to me. And you, you I know you all have quite a bit to tell, 50 years of information. Um, we sure do. I can't <laughs> wait. And you said a book as well, right? You mentioned a book. Yeah, we got the book and the movie and the documentary, yes. Okay. Well, I will keep tabs and just keep us posted. We'll be sure and let our, our Unsung Gatier family here know what's going on so we can support you as well. Now, before I close, I always ask everyone um, if you could just, and you kind of did a little bit earlier, but under the, our circumstances, everybody's locked down, locked in. Can you just give some words of encouragement um, or just some words in general of, about what's going on right now? Um, a lot of people have lost loved ones or they're sick themselves or, you know, losing jobs. And I just asked to leave, if you could leave on a note and just give us something positive or give us some input on that. Well, I mentioned earlier about our song, Love and Understanding, mm -hmm. uh, about people coming together. Uh, uh, because uh, what's going on in these trying times. And we did a song years ago uh, that J.T. Tiller called Home is Where the Heart Is. And that's where we're at. We're mm -hmm. at home. And uh, we have to come together and stick together and pray together. And one day, you know, we will come out of this. And you know what? We will celebrate good times. Come on. All right. <laughs> that's a great way to end it. Now, I know you can't see us who, but at the end, this is a happy hour, a virtual happy hour. And we're going to toast to you. I have my glass and everybody it, who has their glasses at home, we're doing a virtual toast to you. Thank you so much we're in celebration of you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you. We hope you'll come back um, and see us, you know, when all these things start to happen and talk about them and help you promote them here on this Fans of Us Sun page. All right. Thank you, Ku for coming. We appreciate you. And on behalf of Luther and the fans of Unsung, Unsung Tears, we say good night. Have a blessed day. And thank you so much. I got to do one thing. I oh. got to give a shout out to Little Mike. Little Mike, is as in Chicago Mike? Chicago Mike. <laughs> That's my buddy. <laughs> yes. I don't. I talked to him today and I, I don't think he's on. I don't see him. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he was able to join us, but he can go back and watch because this will be recorded and I'll share. I'll share with you all as well if you want to have this so people can hear. It. But yes, I, that's my buddy, Chicago Mike. And special thanks to Chicago Mike because he helped make this happen. I asked him. Yeah, uh, I know. Yes. So he he made sure he took care of me. And thanks to him for bringing you to us and, and doing this interview and this chat with us. We appreciate it. So I have to, I'll toast okay. to him too. This is to you, Chicago Mike. Cheers. <laughs> All righty. Thank you so much, Mr. Koo. Right. Talk to you soon. Have a good night. Okay. All right. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Good night, Bye. everybody.